Hi, this is the Bet Central podcast. Let's make some profit. Hello and welcome to another Masters Master Class with myself, David Couple at Capilino on Twitter slash X and our favorite Panda Masters. How are you today, my friend? I am. I am good, man. I'm good. Um, it's nice to record consecutive weeks. Um, quite quite excited. Even though, um, as we are recording this podcast, um, as we're I don't mention it. Don't we are recording that. on a, on a, on a Thursday. Um, I've just witnessed two goals while I'm sitting here against United. Oh my goodness, that is um, that's a that's a so. Let uh, so let's let's, yeah. let's put the record straight for our listeners. United were leading two 0 They were playing well. <laughs> Masters was not watching. Now, Masters tuned on the TV. Since he has tuned on the TV, Porto have scored two goals. So, we know that he is the one that jinxes United. So, if you also want Masters to stop watching United, please send us a message. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> But, okay, let's uh, jump into this week's Masterclass. Um Another eight games, four on Saturday, four on Sunday. We're starting with uh, United's bitter rivals, actually. Yes. Um, we're starting with um, United's um, um, rivals, and it is, again, an early kickoff. Uh, they said never bet or back the early kickoff, and that's, that's, that's what we are doing. Yeah, we have Crystal Palace versus Liverpool. Um, Liverpool is playing away, but the official bet here will be um, sorry, um, Liverpool to uh, win. As um, I think uh, everyone knows, Liverpool are quite, quite, quite in good form without even mentioning maybe um, some of their Champions League games. So far this season, um, they are sitting uh, first, having played five, lost one, um, even though the other teams uh, like City and Arsenal have been lost. But because they've won the most amount of, of games, they are leading there by one point, having scored 12 um, goals and, um, camp and then counting the, some of the Champions League And the cup game, I think it, they 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 are winning. It's eight out of the 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 nine, so they are quite in, in good good form, and they are playing um against a, a Palace side um for like this season. I'm not sure what's going on with um Crystal Palace and Wolves. They're still looking for a win. Um, their first win this season. They've played six games, three win. I mean, three losses and um three draws so they are quite in bad bad shape and I think facing such a, a strong um, Liverpool side or maybe rather informed Liverpool side for me I don't see Crystal Palace are winning uh, this game I think uh, Liverpool is just one of the games where they have to take advantage of a weaker side while then um, leaving some of those uh, disappointment in the bigger matches so this one it should be um, Quite a simple game for them, so we're going to for we're going for a Liverpool to win. Yeah, I mean, based on everything you said and based on how both teams have played this season, I think it makes sense uh, for Liverpool to be the favorites in this game. Uh, they have won five in a row. Um, they look quite solid. Uh, just that one game. When we or I needed them to win uh, against Nottingham Forest at home, they messed it up. So let's hope uh, it's not another case like this. But uh, I think away from home suits them a bit better than at home, where they expected to make the game. You know, Palace also expected to play a little bit more offensively than just only defending. But yeah, there seems to be something wrong, not clicking as much. Because when Oliver Glasner took over at the end of last season, They were flying and they were scoring, you know, at pretty well. Uh, beating Aston Villa 5-0, beating United 4-0, West Ham 5-2. You know, I don't know what happened to that Palace side. Maybe it's Olise who went to Bayern Munich. 
Uh, maybe he was so important to them that without him they're struggling a bit. But it's okay. They can continue to struggle for this week's masterclass. And, um, they can. We are moving over to our favorite league for goals. Yes, uh, the Bundesliga, where we actually have quite a, a simple one. Uh, and over 1.5 goals in the game of Union Berlin versus Dortmund. And um, Union Berlin, I've actually, I thought maybe they would be better this season, but I've realized that um, they're continuing their last season uh, inconsistent form, rather, of goals where you're getting a lot of 1-0s, um, getting a lot of 0-0s. Zero zeros. They, they're not a typical Bundesliga team. And I think um, last season they've proved it, and it seems like it's the same this season. However, they are playing Dortmund, who are um, sitting quite comfortably in terms of the goals. Uh, looking at um, their recent games, maybe the last five, we have, um, I mean, together the Bundesliga and the Champions League, we have scores of such um, 7 1 against Celtics. 4-2 against Bochum, 5-1 against um, Stuttgart, where it was a loss, actually. Um, a 3-0 win against La Bruge, 4-2 win against Hedenham. So you can see that these are actually quite, quite high um, scoring games. And um, having to balance that out with a uh, Union Berlin's um, low scoring games, for me, it's it, it equals to at least two goals or more and um with how a uh, Dortmund in terms of uh historically they are in terms of goals they are a team a good team to bet on goals and that's why for a value that bet cause is giving us we are going for over 1.5 goals yeah head to head also looks good um actually not finding a fixture between these two that didn't have at least uh, two goals. Uh, you can look back to 2016. Um, 13 games played, all of them had at least uh, over 1.5. Uh, last season, this fixture, Dortmund won at 2 0 in Berlin, and at home, they won 4 uh, 2. Dortmund actually quite prolific in their, with their record against Union Berlin. Won six out of their last seven. Um, so expecting something similar, the goals to come rather from Dortmund's side uh, than Union Berlin's side. Um, Dortmund obviously also quite prolific now in the Champions League. Um, yeah, I don't think more needs to be added. We only need two goals. Yeah, on just two goals. Mm. On paper, they are coming. It, I I think it could be a game that has three goals even, but let's see. Um, our next game takes us back. To the Premier League? Yes, uh, well, we have Brentford versus Wolves. And um, it's just one of those, uh, I was going to say, uh, mid-table teams. But um, based on the recent form, uh, Wolves, um, low, 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 low team. Uh, but yeah, we are going for for goals. And the uh, Wolves, it's... um. One of those teams this season where um, I think uh, <clears throat> um, similar to to uh, what we said about Crystal Palace, where it's um, teams that you'd expect them to be more of like a mid-table. But to be fair, it is the beginning of the season. But um, if also, if there's one thing that the, this top league, like the Premier League, always proves is that each game matters, you know. So the these games that you are losing in the beginning of the season, they might bite you at the end. Um, you have teams that are winning the league uh, by one point. You have teams that are getting relegated by one point. So it does, it does uh, matter. But obviously, they can still turn the season around. But uh, we're not talking about that now. Now we are going for an over. 1.5 goals in terms of the official bet and um, that's highly motivated by how um, Wolves is also um, considering quite a lot number of um, goals 
Out of the six games that they've played in the Premier League, they've conceded 16, which is the highest um, in the league. You, the second team that comes close is Everton with um, 15. So Wolves are quite in bad shape. They've scored um, six goals, um, what I like, meaning that they've managed to average at least one goal per game that they scored. So I think um, they're quite balanced um, in terms of that. Brentford are then sitting uh, more of mid-table. And since they are playing at home here, it might be a draw for them. So something that you need to consider, maybe a draw of Brentford uh, for and over 1.5 goals. But uh, we're going for, for, for us, we're going for goals in terms to be safe uh, for the podcast. But another good stat that is motivating me for this bet is that Wolves this season, they haven't played any game that's under 1.5. Uh, all of them, six out of the six, have been over 1.5, averaging 3.7. Like I said, they concede quite a, a lot number of goals. Brentford on the other side, they're similar. Um, six out of the six games they've played, all have been over 1.5 goals and then averaging three. I think even though these teams, um, traditionally, none of them is... Um, uh, the top teams, but I think they can easily deliver these two goals that we need. So, yeah, that's it. Yeah, let's hope they do. Uh, they have done it the last nine games between them. Uh, over 1.5 goals. We have to go back to 2017 to find the last game between Brentford and Wolves that didn't have over 1.5 goals. Uh, they actually met Three times in 2024, 2-0 uh, win for Brentford, 3-2 for Wolves, a one all. And then last year, Christmas, they also met 4-1 for, for Wolves. So the goals are there in this fixture. Let's hope they come this weekend. Um, not much more, I don't think, needs to be said. Um, let's move on to our fourth uh, Saturday game, Manchester City against Fulham. Yes, yes, City. <clears throat> Man City against um, Fulham. Uh, we do have to remind everyone that we did have Man City uh, last week. I think they were playing Newcastle away against... Yeah, they were playing Newcastle away and then we had them for an over 2.5. And then that game ended as a surprisingly 1-1. <laughs> I think that goes to show sometimes... Betting is um, quite, 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 quite strange because I did expect a lot of goals in that game. But that's just what happens sometimes. And that's why we always stress that we need to keep it fun. And um, this this time around as well, we are going for an over 2.5 again. And a team like City, it's so rare for them to play um, consecutive games where they are failing to, to bring on some goals. We've seen um, how Hallard plays. He can blank out this week, zero goals, and then come with four goals um, the next game. So it's one of the, of those teams. They are sitting um, second. Uh, Fulham are sitting sixth, not doing so bad, um, to be honest. They're quite uh, in good form, according to me. So they should be able to give City quite a, quite a, um, a, a good game. But I think uh, what motivates me quite a bit here is cities, when they are playing at home, um, they play quite comfortably. Uh, <clears throat> in terms of, um, they have a, a, a two-one win against uh, Watford in the cup game. They have that two-two um, draw against Arsenal, where they got a last-minute goal um, to 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 make it even, and then um, we have that odd game with Inter Milan where it was 0-0. But besides that one, it's been 2-1, it's been 4-1, 2-1, 4-2. You know, it's um they quite they play they play quite strongly at home. And uh, whenever we have a team like City versus any other team such as Fulham, even though themselves they are in good form, but the stats and the bets are mostly based on City because they are the stronger team and they dictate the pace of the game. They dictate where the game needs to go. And uh, hence, they here we're going for an over 2.5 goals as the official bets. That's it. 
Yeah, this is a fixture that City have dominated quite a bit. 16 consecutive wins against Fulham. And six out of the last six games had over 2.5 goals. Four out of the last five had actually both teams to score. Uh, but there were some impressive um, score lines. 4-0 last season at Fulham. 5-1 at home for City. The season before was 2-2-1 two, two, wins. A 4-1 in the FA Cup. A 3-0. Uh, another 4-0. So lots of goals in this fixture, uh, especially for City. Um, let's hope they can you know, come up with the goods for us. Um, that's our four Saturday games for those who want to slice and dice and only play the Saturday games um, those four give you 3.32 odds so you can triple your money if they come home um, the code on Betcoza is FPYWW FPYWW but we're moving on to our Sunday fixtures and we are going to Italy for the first time Yes, um, Italy for the first time, and we um, need to dabble in Italy now and again um, when we find them some some good games. Even though we know that um, they do not perform consistently, but I think um, so far they have been um, good for us. So we have Juventus versus Cagliari, where um, Juventus are playing at home, and the official bet will be for Juventus to win and um, looking at maybe Serie A itself um, and not anything else we have uh, Juventus sitting um, second uh, having not lost any game as yet it's three wins to draws quite underwhelming but um, it's still second and then we have Cagliari here sitting uh, 17th which is a one spot above relegation um, zone, we have to do note that it's still the early um, days of the league. But in terms of form, it does say something that they are not quite in good form, even though they did manage to win their latest games. Or actually, it was their only game to win this season in terms of the league itself against Palmer, where they won 3-2, but they still considered to... Um, a, a, a what you call um three goals so i'm quite confident that at home uh, juventus can be able to to win this game uh, against um a out of form a um, team like uh, Cagliari. even though i am hoping as well that um juventus bring that brings that form they had also when they played uh, rp Leipzig in the in, in the league I saw in the Champions League where they won 3-2. So for me, I think it's um, quite a, a, a no-brainer. They have to uh, bring it home. And that um, win at RB Leipzig was quite impressive because they went down to 10 men and they went down 2-1. They went behind 2-1, but they came back and, and beat them 3-2 in Leipzig. Uh, Leipzig are quite weird this season. You know, they beat my team Leverkusen, who hadn't lost uh, in the Bundesliga for over a year. And then they drop points in the league and they use, lose at home to Juventus. So, yeah. Let's see. Um, Juventus in this fixture quite um, dominant, especially at home. Um, where they've won the last eight games in a row against Cagliari. Uh, so, I think, yeah, if they can just continue... Well, this home record um, on the weekend will be good. And I see um, we're staying in Serie A for our second Sunday game. Yes, um, we, we're staying in Serie A where I feel we have um, another good game and we're also going for a simple bet here. And I um, think we did have last year, uh, last week, but uh, not but, but um, they delivered. Um, Lazio versus Empoli this week and the official bet is over 1.5 goals and uh, for me uh, whenever we go for over 1.5 goals I consider it one of the the simpler simpler bets so to speak. Uh, Lazio are the, the favorites to win this game even though 
uh, if from the serial log point of view, Empoli are sitting above um, them. But um, last year, this season, her are considering, I mean, are considering a lot of goals and scoring a lot of goals. So out of the six games they've played, they've scored um, 12, which uh, equates to two per game. And then they've conceded um, 10, which is quite a lot of um, goals. I mean, you have a, for example, you have Monza, who are sitting last in the lock, and they've considered only eight goals. And then you have uh, Lazio, who are sitting seventh of the lock, and then they've considered 10. And um, the reason that um, they're sitting such high up is because they managed to also outscore or match the, the, the opponent. So that's why it has attracted me to, to them. And um, also looking at uh, the actual stats of the goals as well, in terms of um, the averages, they are averaging um, 3.7 goals uh, per game this season. And in all of their games, six out of the six have been over 2.5 goals. So not even 1.5, over 2.5 goals. And for us here, we are only asking for 1.5. And um, the, <clears throat> the other thing as well, um, having looked at how Empoli plays when they are away, all their games, which is three out of the three, have been over 1.5 goals. So you match the two stats, and uh, with all the information I've just given you, um, everyone now, I think this should be in the pack for an over 1.5 goals. That's it. Let's hope Lazio can deliver. Um, Empoli has been a bit goal shy this season. Only scored five and conceded two. Actually, the second best defense in Serie A. So let's see if Lazio can, uh, you know, break them down. Um, they have a good record against uh, Empoli. No losses in 11. Three wins in a row. And the last six games between those two also had over 1.5 goals. So if they can just continue with this trend, then uh, we should be home dry and safe. Um, we're going back to the Bundesliga now for our second last game. Yes, um, we're going back um, to Bundesliga. We're almost um, at the end, like you're saying, where we have Heidenheim versus um, RB. And um, here we're going for over 2.5 goals. And um, I think, um, I mean, traditionally or uh, historically, uh, RB does, is a team that considers or maybe has a lot of games of over 2.5 goals. Even though this season, so far, they've been uh, on and off, according to me, where they've had two games that um, had zero zero you know which is um quite 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 odd but um even with the zero zero games looking at um, some of their recent games i mean we just spoke about the one against um uh, juventus uh, they lost um three two but that's a five goals game the one before that one they won it uh four nil and then the odd one out, um, like I said, um, the one against St. Pauli, where it's 0-0. Zero, zero. The one before that was Atletico Madrid, where it's 2-1. So they still have that healthy uh, record in terms of um, uh, goals. And um, Hayden Ham, on, on, on the other end, they are playing the Conference League. And um, I don't know if maybe you might know better uh, than me, but I don't think they have um, enough star quality. They have enough um, <clears throat> stamina to be able to compete uh, in both of these um, competition and successfully so, because as much as it is a lower um, competition in terms of the Conference League, but it is quite um, a, a demanding. So uh, here, RP for me should be able to win this game. But because um, I want to be safe, I am going for, for goals. And also, um, Hayden Ham on the other end, their, their games have been quite um, interesting as well in terms of goals. 
uh, the 2-1 in that conference league. Um, then you have the 2-0. But uh, then you have uh, that loss to Freiburg uh, where they lost 3-0. Then uh, they lost 4-2 to, to, to Dortmund. And then they won uh, 4-0 to Augsburg. And then uh, another conference league where it's 3-2. So, yeah, I think um, I'm talking a bit much. But uh, you can see as I'm talking that this is written over 2.5 goals. Mm, we can tell that uh, Masos has his notes in front of him today. <laughs> he has his <laughs> dead to back up his selections. But yeah, um, Heidenheim, you know, for them it's like a little fairy tale to play in a European competition. You know, they were only promoted to the Bundesliga last season. They're not one of the biggest clubs in Germany, you know, but... Um, so they are, I think, living the dream, even though it's just, you know, in 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 quote in explanation marks, the conference league for them, it's you know like the Champions League for other teams. But yeah, this team, uh, this game, had over two point five goals uh, in their last three games, um, and Mastos has given us a lots of stats. I hope the goals will fly in on Sunday as well. You know, maybe maybe there are some tired legs after both teams played in a European competition this week, uh, which also helps our bet. And we are moving on to another Bundesliga game, the last for this week's Masterclass. Yes, um, the last one in the Masterclass where we have um, Stuttgart versus Hoffenheim. And the official bet here is that um, Stuttgart should win this game. So... Uh, Stuttgart um, to to win as the the official bet, and um, again uh, based on um, what you call <clears throat> a recent um, results uh, or rather recent form as well. Um, starting maybe off with the Hoffenheim, the away team, they are sitting there in the relegation spot, having played five games, they've lost four of them, and. Um, only won one, and the one game that they won, they considered two. They ended up winning it three two against that newly promoted kill, and then after that, um, it's been straight four losses. And then Stuttgart on the other side, they are a mid table team to be honest, but um, if you look at the actual um form so far, they've only lost one game. <clears throat> They've only lost one game against Freiburg and then lost two wins and two draws. It's just that this is a a quite um strong league. So even though you might only lose one game, some of the draws can throw you off. That's why they find themselves sitting um in that um eighth uh po position. And then um at home Stuttgart, they won one. Um then they've drawn um uh, one as well because they've only played two two games instead instead of the league. But the goals that they score, I mean, it's five one at at home against Dortmund, and um, a three three against uh, Mainz. So for me, I am quite um, comfortable uh, with them. And um, again with them, <clears throat> they are in the UEFA Champions League, but um, they're still in the in the league um, phase where they've played uh, round two, finished one one, so they they quite they quite strong um, uh, 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 for for me. It's just they have been unlucky in the Champions League where their first game was against Real Madrid and they caught it um, three one, but otherwise overall they should be good for it. Um, Hoffenheim are playing in the. Europa um, League as well, but I think for me they did well last season. But I don't think they have um, what it takes to go all the way this season. So yeah, I mean Stuttgart to to win in this game. Yeah, I thought <laughs> I thought you would say over two point five for this game because Stuttgart and Hoffenheim, you know, they are having goals in their games. Stuttgart, 9 out of the last 10 games had over 2.5. Hoffenheim, 5 out of 6. And both teams to score for both teams in their last 7 games. And also in the head-to-head, 
5 out of 6 over 2.5, 5 out of 6 both teams to score. So for me, it's a fixture actually that's destined, you know, for um, over 2.5 and both teams to score. Masters selected the Stuttgart win. At home, uh, they have won quite a bit uh, of their home games recently. There's no loss. Uh, I think in all of 2024 at home. So they are the favorites definitely for this game. Um, let's hope they can live up to it. Uh, there is a little bonus bet that people can look here. Uh, I think Stuttgart games are primed for over 1.5 goals in the first half. Uh, I think I had that in the Champions League game now as a single and it came through. Um, so if you know, people are a bit more risky. They can look at that, which should give you double of, of what you put in. But yeah, eight games for this week's masterclass powered by Bet Cosa. Um, eight games and 11.74 odds. The code for those who want to play on Bet Cosa X9YQJ. X9YQJ. Sure. And then, as always, Mastos, any famous last words? Ah, uh, famous last words um, so far is that um, I'll finish this United game <laughs> and uh, hopefully uh, I sleep with uh, with the with the win. But otherwise, guys, um, I, I I did say I did mention some of the weird results, and I think um, if anyone has watched the Champions League um, yesterday, they saw some of the results. We did speak about it um, offline uh, between you and I. Teams like um, Real Madrid losing uh, 1-0 to Lille. Teams like uh, Bayern uh, losing 1-0 to Aston Villa. So it can happen. And um, that's why you should never think a bet can come 100%. Uh, so you must continue being um, responsible and um, having fun with it. And um, thank you to Betcoza for the platform. Yes, slice and dice. Bet responsible, bet with what you can afford to lose. You know, it's uh, still close to payday, so maybe the bank accounts are a bit fuller, fuller but uh, don't think, you know, it's just easy to double your money. Uh, if you need to pay your bills, pay them first and use whatever is left, uh, maybe for betting. Um, but remember, it's also after a European week, there's always some surprise or some teams have tired legs there is always some of the favorites are dropping points so um, try to avoid those uh, let's hope we can bring this masterclass home and hopefully we'll hear each other again next week yes yes uh, cheers cheers thank you, thank you.